Okay, well, thanks for coming. Um, this uh, session is uh, Clicktivist, Donor, Volunteer. Uh, my name is Andrew Hunt. Um, I work with NAGA Strategies in Washington, D.C. Um, we've been working with Civic CRM as a company since uh, 08, 09, depends on how you count it. And then I've been personally working with Civic CRM first as a, at, at an organization where I used to work since uh, 06. So um, a lot has changed over the years, and it's really fantastic to have uh, every, come every year to CivicCon where there's more and more people at each one. Um, so thanks again for coming to the session. Um, there's actually handouts so if you go to the back of the room, we'll um, be able to do more sheets. So the idea of uh, Clicktivist Donor, Volun Donor Volunteer is engaging people more deeply in your organization and using CivicCRM as a tool for doing really just not, uh, doing the basics of recruiting and engaging people uh, yourself. So we'll talk a little bit about your supporters about the um, kind of your hopes, and um, your hopes and expectations, prompts and opportunities for, for engaging your supporters in, um, in the work of your organization, and then how to leverage CivCRM to do those things. And so um, we'll end up using a lot of examples from organizations that you work, uh, the organizations that you work for. Um, if, you do, if you're a consultant, maybe, maybe think of just a handful in different cases, because it'll kind of build upon itself in, in these uh, activities that we'll be doing. But fundamentally, CRM as a word is kind of a new thing, or as a term is kind of a new thing. But it's not actually a new activity. We still, we, like, as, as, as long as there's ever been organizations, as long as there's ever been movements, the people have been trying to engage more people, people have been trying to understand what each other's motivations are, and understand, and, and understand how to get more involvement out of, out of the folks. If you grab a phone, you heard me. Thanks. Um. And so, um, I just want to use an example of, of, a, um, of a square dance. There's, I, I serve on this uh, collect, um, kind of meet, uh, steering committee of this collective that runs this big square dance in Washington, D.C. And it's very old-timey, very offline, even though we do use Facebook for, for, for outreach. Still, most people who come are invited there by friends. Most people, um, when they come, we ask um, people to help clean up at the, end of the, at the end of the dance. Not everybody cleans up. We wouldn't know what to do with 400 people cleaning up. It would be ridiculous. Um, but we have a handful of those clean up. At a, of those, the people that kind of come regularly, we ask them to help set up. People that come regularly and help with set up or, or with, with outreach or with taking home, um, we have jars and glasses and so forth for people to drink water and beer and so forth. And, um, so someone has to take them home to wash them in their washing machine or in the dishwasher. So we'll ask more of, of those people. And then eventually, um, people who are engaged a lot, we help out a lot, we then um, encourage them to, to we, we invite them to become part of the, uh, part of the collective, part of the uh, steering committee. And so th there's no software in any of that. It's just basic volunteer management. But still, we're asking a little bit more at each time, cued by the people who show some interest, some, some engagement. And in the back of all of our heads, we know what someone's like, if if, um, the, what, what are the different signs that someone seems to be engaged. Someone seems to be that they might be ripe to be asked something new. And so um, there's, there's, there's nothing new about any of this stuff. But in effect, that's what we're trying to do with, um, with uh, Civic CRM or with any CRM tool, is to, is to be able to see how can we know more people than we can actually um, personally know. Because the organization's big enough, um, because there's, uh, people might be distributed across the country or around the world. And so knowing people, their interests, their, um, the level of interest, and the resources that they bring um, to, your, to your organization and, and, and to the movement that you, that you belong to, that's the fundamentals of constituent relationship management. And so CivicCRM is just the tool to know what you can't otherwise know. So um, we'll start with uh, who are your supporters? And um, well, uh, the, the question is, really, what, what kind of types, what kind of, what kind of clusters of people, what kind of um, uh, profiles of people, not CivicCRM profiles, but just like describe a couple of examples, a couple um, uh, types, people that, you, that, you've, that you've encountered in, in your work that um, support you, in, whether a whole lot or whether just a little. And so on the first page of this uh, worksheet, um, think, two, think of uh, two or three pro, um, profiles of supporters, and you can think of them abstract, or maybe think of Joe or Jill, who, a couple people that, that you know th yourself. 
Give them names, whether again, whether abstract names or, or personal names. And then write down what their interests, what their motivations, um, and then like maybe some common attributes among them. And so you can just use each column for each different type. So I hope, I hope it's pretty self-explanatory, but please don't hesitate to interrupt if you have questions or, um, or thinking, uh, what, what, what do you mean by any of this stuff? Um, this can be a real kind of open-ended open -ended conversation, and, it'll, and we'll, we'll definitely take a lot more questions and, and, and suggestions in a minute. But um, is it, does that first sheet make sense? The third one is not each individual. It's all of them together, right? So, um, no, it's actually like, Ideally, what the common attributes of that kind of type or that individual and people like them are like. So maybe you have people who are engaged in an organization um, because they're interested in this particular issue area. And other people are engaged kind of more socially because, yeah, they believe in everything that, that, that you do, but it's really because they like going to the events or they're, all their friends are involved. Um, and so maybe the first column, you, you'd say that the first column has certain common attributes of... Um, that, yeah, whatever background or, or whatever, um, whatever uh, education or whatever um, uh, area where, where they, like, yeah, common experiences. And then a different one, then the second one has a whole different set of things. But, and things we, especially things you'll be able to, to, to know from recording information, people coming to events, that sort of thing. And just to start with, I mean, like, what, what, what kind of uh, profiles, can anyone want to volunteer just one to, um, to start the conversation. Mentors? Sure. Men mentors. mentors. So you have people who are engaged in the organization, kind of serve as mentors to others. Cool. And um, like what, what kind of interests do they, do they bring? What, what, what things do they uh, um, bring to your organization or interest in get, get, them, get them started with you? Uh, often to to learn more about the issue, so they want training, so that they're better prepared to, to engage our clients. Mm -hmm. um, and often they use that same training to and they apply it in their own lives. Mm -hmm. So, and then they like to meet others that are like them, you know, that share in that experience. So. Cool. So, and Michael, there's actually worksheets over in, in the back corner there. Okay. Um, everyone's kind of working on. Um, who has, an, who has another pro, kind of profile of, of, of folks that are engaged in your organization? Yeah. I have CSA customers. Mm hmm And so um, what, what, what kind of do you think the motivations for involvement would be? A lot of them are looking for something that's family friendly, um, a way to get their kids outside, um, eating healthy, supporting local agriculture, um, things that are affordable. So, uh, yeah. And um, for us, uh, as, as a partner of social venture partners, it's um, the application of your skills along with what the other partners bring to the table, most of whom were all ex-corporate people who are currently working, mm -hmm. and applying that set of skills to help make the community better in the best ways possible by helping underserved kids and education through the nonprofits that we take on board. Interesting, cool. So like a, a common attribute of them seems, seems to be a lot of them come from the corporate world and so they have that sort of the background. Apply those corporate also. skills to the passion and the nonprofits who may not understand what they're not doing to scale and grow. Fantastic, yeah. Anyone you know, say anything else? Any, any other profiles to share? We have uh, members who are members purely because the benefits are a great deal mm -hmm. um, so they're more i call them value members they're much more interested in getting the deal than necessarily supporting what we do um, but we've got one so right we gotta do something <laughs> and that's that's a big thing i think people join organizations people maybe not are not joined deeply but just kind of touch organizations in, in a tangential way even um, for many different reasons, many of them are very self-interested because it's just like well, it's cheaper to pay than, than paying the fee for going to every single park, um, every single time they go to the park, um, or they want get they want good produce um, in an affordable, predictable way, and they'll join the CSA. And others will be join because they they have certain like well, deeper fulfillment, deeper deeper needs they want to fulfill, or 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 or, 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 or other motivations that may be more traditionally mission oriented, 
they're all important elements of, 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 of your constituency. And so um, by thinking of the obvious ones and then thinking a little bit deeper, like identifying additional pro, um, kind of profiles of folks, that way you can kind of think, think about how, what you, what you, how you try to engage people and also just how you operate as an organization can um, be, be uh, seen and, and, and affect different types of people in different ways. So the next step, we're going to talk about uh, what actions that you hope they take. What, what, what are you um, kind of looking for uh, supporters to do? And in this case, you've got like a giant list, and you don't have to fill it all the way, but if you get going, then, then go at it. Um, the point is um, not to think necessarily about each, um, each profile at this point, but um, what, what, what would, what would uh, be helpful for your organization, whether it's donations, whether it's, um, whether it's uh, pe attending events, but maybe why would you have people attend events for educational purposes, for um, to to look good for funders? I mean, like, there's a lot of uh, reasons. Again, high-minded or or very uh, kind of uh, basic um, that people do things. And so, um, just kind of list out what 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 actions uh, d that you want people to take. And again, they may be big or small. So um, don't think it has to be like join the board. Set up plan giving. Um, it could be it could be as, as as simple as yeah, click an online petition or um, or something like that. If you grab a there's a worksheet right there behind you. Cool. So we have any uh, examples of uh, of actions? You just throw them out actually. Give us money. Yeah. <laughs> Volunteer. That's it. Um, for the investees that we work with, one of our targets is to be sure they understand we want to be their partner. We don't just hand money over. So we want to be invited to board meetings. We want to help them know how to grow. So <coughs> be ready to include us or it's not going to be a good relationship. Mm -hmm. Tell your friends about us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give us advice. Thanks. Um, contact your elected official on an, about an issue we're working with. Cool. Any others? Follow us on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. 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 Share our campaign. So some of these are, are going to be very common, kind of across all things, like all, all organizations. Anybody with a Facebook page probably would love people to follow them on Facebook. Um, anybody would probably love a donation. But some organizations don't, don't really thrive so much on donations. They may be... Um, they may be government agencies, or they may be um, they may be uh, funded primarily by earned revenue, or or or, or, or something else. Um, so understanding what's what the actual actions that are important for your organiza your organization can be really helpful. And so now that we're going um, kind of just listed them out, um, you'll see those uh, kind of two columns there: the level and the type. So some things. It takes no effort, like following on Facebook, very little effort. No one's going to know. No one's going to be. Um, no one's going to be uh, uh, looking like standing out um, from anybody else. Like no one's going to be um, losing any money. No one's going to be um, taking up any time by following on Facebook. Other things like making sure that to, to engage the organization in board meetings and other th and other things as like a, a organizational stakeholder can be a little bit more um, more involved. So. With that level, just go from one, where something's just real token, uh, it's not a big deal um, that someone does it, to four, where it's, uh, where it's a, a pretty significant ask of somebody, or a significant, significantly, um, or something even if it's never asked, but it's, it's something that has a lot of significance, either to the, uh, either to the constituent or to your organization. And, um, and then also mark them over there with uh, the different types of commitments. So if it's a financial commitment, um, circle the F. If it's something that takes a lot of time, um, whether it's volunteering, or even if it's something that you're, that someone's doing that um, that they may not be interacting directly with you, but still d having done whatever they're doing takes a lot of time. Um, that that might that might be a T. Um, S if, it's, if it relies on certain skills, maybe not everybody has. And then finally, the R if it draws upon your reputation or on your relationships that you have. Um, because some people, that, that, that in itself, taking a stand, is a bit more of an ask than if something is done in private. So, for, um, does anyone have any trouble kind of like classifying them? That doesn't need to be either or, they can be, um, 
F's and, and uh, R's or, or, or S's and, and T's if it's like if you're a skilled volunteer or something like that. Um, and the point of this is not just to do it on its own, uh, do these uh, classifications on their own. It's really to kind of start thinking about how different actions relate to each other. Because our goal here is to, is to map out what, what things kind of lead to the other. What, what can we, um, how can we manage um, and encourage folks to be moving from something that, some token action to some related, or, um, related action or something that, that uh, can be a little bit more engaged or, or a little bit more meaningful for them and for your organization. So if you'll see the next page, it's got those big circles. And hopefully it's, this is legible up here. It's just mapping these actions out on the circle. So if you imagine, this is very, very engaged, uh, very um, uh, big commitments, um, either big financial commitments, big time commitments. Um, out here, it's something super token. It's not, not, a, big, not a big deal, it's, it's, um, but it's something that's valuable for you as, the organ as, as an organization. So um, if you take your actions from the previous page that you listed out and kind of arrange them, put your ones out here, your twos, your threes, and your fours. Um, and if you can, don't, don't worry about it make, making it perfect, but maybe arrange them around such that things that kind of hang together will be on the same side of the circle than the things that are just other, other areas. Does everyone have a kind of an even mix um, between things that are farther out and, and closer in? Everyone have things that are a little bit lopsided on the outside or lopsided on the inside? And if, if so, then you can kind of spread things out or maybe even just think of a couple other things that are kind of uh, more minor stuff. That way um, um, it'll be helpful for the next couple steps. Or you can just always just imagine things being inside and more inside or whatever, what have you. Just subtract one from everything. <laughs> That was one of the things when I was putting these together, I thought, well, maybe I should go one through five and have people drop whichever one that they have fewer of, <laughs> just because some people are, are more, tend to put everything on one end or the other end. So hopefully that's pretty intuitive. Um, the uh, next step is to actually use, this, use this, uh, these circles and identify the natural steps. What things, um, just draw little arrows here, you can see, um, a, li uh, a thing that might be likely to do after uh, if someone likes you on Facebook is if they're on Twitter, they might mention you in a tweet or, follow, or, or do something that's not just a passive following, but actually um, a, a, a mention um, that, that, that uh, publicizes and also uses a little bit of their reputation, for example. Um, also, someone might, it's another social thing, is to maybe bring a friend to, a, to an event. Um, on the other hand, if someone's clicking a petition of yours, they might be attending an event. Um, or they, might, um, or they might donate next. And so um, you just draw, draw arrows like this um, between things that seem, to, that seem like natural steps from one to the other, and especially ones that go from one level to the next level in. They want to share a, a, a pair of things that they've uh, connected as natural steps? They start by uh, sharing our campaign then they start spreading awareness, and then they actually conduct an outreach themselves. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Um, <clears throat> attending an education program or field trip, um, and then volunteer, and then donate. And also with that, attend a program, share experiences, conversely, back to attend a program, volunteer, donate. Cool. And so I guess it sounds like you actually thought through a couple steps in a row, which is helpful to, to um, not just think of a single pair of actions, but also of, of where that falls. And people often use the term ladder of engagement. Um, and I think that's often good, but sometimes people, that, that ladder of engagement tends to only think of a single track, when most organizations probably have several different ways of being involved for several different types of people, for several different, um, different uh, um, skill sets or, or preferences or having money more or time more or, or, or depth of interest. And so there's, a, there's a, a lot of different ways for people to be involved significant, significantly and to kind of move from being on the periphery down to something, um, something deeper. 
So um, let's take a look, if, you, if um, each of y'all take a look at the um, uh, one pair of, uh, of uh, actions. So if it could be bring a friend to volunteer occasionally or like on Facebook to mention in a tweet, um, clicking the petition to attending an event, but um, look at something that's on your outermost level and um, to start with and, and then find something that's on the next outermost level. So it's probably going to be something super throwaway maybe and something that's maybe not all that significant to you. But, but still, think about, think about that, um, that transition. How do you move people from one action to the next um, among, these, among these relatively token actions? And so if you, if you see on the next page where it says analyze steps, um, put the past action and put the goal action there. And um, work through those first four questions. Uh, the, what would motivate someone to do that goal action? Um, what obstacles might they have to, to, um, to doing that goal action? Uh, and, and is there any um, subset of supporters, like the, going back to those profiles that you, that you did at the beginning, are some going to be more likely to do that than others? And, um, and also, like, what kind of prompts, what, what, what asks, what um, other experiences, what things going on in the outside world even, would make someone more likely to do the second thing, um, having done the first thing? And, you can, and you'll be able to, to, we'll do a second one here in a minute, but um, also uh, you can always keep these questions and do them on, on all your arrows. But right now we're just, we're just going to be focusing on a, on a single, um, single pair of actions. So um, anyone want to volunteer a, a, a pair of actions and, and, um, and what might motivate them to, to, to move from one to the next? I went from a like on Facebook to attending an event. Um, and what I thought would motivate um, them is seeing an event that excited them. Um, obstacles, maybe money, time, distracted on Facebook, um, distance, they could live in Vermont, maybe here in DC. Um, and then, let me keep going. Sure, why not? The subset of supporters, um, really the ones who have, are uh, directly related to um, or themselves have visited our farm, um, our parents of visitors, or um, they are, you know, in some way, they're very personally connected to with, with the farm. Um, uh, uh, and then a prompt that would make the second action more likely goes back to the subset. If they're encouraged by somebody who is connected with the farm. Um, and I said special discount. I'm not really into discounts, but I wrote that. Cool. Over here, you had it. You, you had it. Yeah, I haven't worked through all the questions yet. That's totally fine. Yeah, no, sure. Sure. Where'd you get it? Um, so I had like first action being sign an online petition, and then goal action being like attend a lobby day event or like a direct action event. Mm -hmm. um, so motivations like somehow the person knowing that like the second goal action might have more of an impact or like would certainly have more of an impact than the first action they did um, and then also like wanting to in person meet like-minded supporters um, and then started to think about obstacles like time and travel and like being more public about their commitment to an issue as well as like how much how much they actually care about it because obviously a lot of people like taking online actions but then you have to start prioritizing like what the issues you care about most are when you're asked to show up to something yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, just on, on the spot, I don't, <laughs> don't want to put, um, if, if, it's, if it's tough to think about, then, then, then feel free to, to, to just say, you know, you know, no. Have you thought a little bit about uh, uh, like what subsets of supporters might be more likely to take that action? Um, so, I guess I got a little confused about that. Sure. Because <laughs> I was wondering, I mean, like, when I thought about subsets earlier, I was thinking about, like, in our organization, we have people who are, like, definitely like to take grassroots types of actions versus doing like more like policy research and so then it kind of gets divided out in that way so like obviously people who like grassroots involvement would be sort of the subset but no I think that's that's fair enough and if you have a way to know who, who falls more into that camp versus people who are more like trying to find the ideal policy right. yeah I think you're absolutely right the people who are finding the ideal policy may not be as interested in in speaking out because they're often like, oh, I don't know, this, this bill isn't perfect, or, or whatever the case may be, yeah. So, um, no, I, 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 that's, that's fair enough. Um, have, do you have, any, have you thought about any, any prompts or, or things that might kind of make the, uh, 
make folks be more likely to kind of move from just signing an online petition to, to attending an event? Yeah, so I think like a sense of urgency or like pressure maybe and that like like a lot of times around like a legislative campaign you're like great you did this but now the vote's tomorrow so we need you here for that you know so that kind of like creating yeah I think sense of urgency is a big one. That's a good example also of an external thing. Like y'all can't control the legislative calendar. It is going to happen whether you're there or not. So you timing whatever whatever you do or, or, or asking when it when the uh, when the, there's a real clear opportunity to, to, to take more action. That that in itself would prompt people to take the second action. Cool. So um, maybe let's start with the, the next page. Um, we're going to go. We'll come back to those last two pieces. But if you go to the next page, it's the same, same set of questions, different pair of uh, actions. And so if you think of something that's in the, uh, the second ring, um, how to move them into the third ring in. Um, or deeper in, depending again on what your circle is. Don't, don't try to take me too, literal, too literally. Um, but something that's a little bit more, uh, a deeper commitment um, from a um, kind of a medium-sized commitment. So it, just like before, you were going from like maybe liking on Facebook to something that's um, like uh, making a donation or something that's kind of a moderate commitment. Now think of same, something that's a, that another pair back from your um, from your map uh, that you do an arrow from something that's kind of a in between commitment, something that's in one of these middle rings to something that's in this, the, the one of the inner two rings, and go through the same same questions. <laughs> Oh, that's fine too. Yeah, yeah. Well, then maybe just think of a different pair. It doesn't matter. Yeah, the the goal is actually just any arrow to maybe, especially like promising looking ones. You'll be able to go through these questions, whether in this session or or, or sometime else, and um, and identify what would be would be um, that you can do or timing that you can do or or or, or um, low hanging fruit that you can find to move people from one thing to the next. And so again, it, I was just trying to. Um, just for the facilitation's sake, but yeah, this, you, you've done nothing wrong by going all the way in. Cool. So, anybody have a, another pair they want to share? Yeah. Well, I think our group might be a tad different than some of the other groups here because you might be our investee, but we're still a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So, every one of the people that becomes a partner and social venture partners. The first thing they have to decide is, of course, the th our goal is to have them become a partner and become an involved partner. Mm -hmm. So initially, we just need to introduce them by having them come to an event and see that good things are happening. But then, like, for example, include a person who might become a partner in one of our projects with one of our investees some of them know they've had an impact elsewhere alone, mm -hmm. but when to get them to become a partner and have a bigger impact, let them see they have a bigger impact when they're part of a team that goes in and has a really scalable and big impact on that nonprofit, not just a single part of what the nonprofit needs, not just give money or something. Right, like yeah. So, to get them to go from interested to becoming a partner and clarifying for them that because all of us put money in every year to a big pot so mm -hmm. we have our own funds so to do that requires financial support and we want them to also bring their time and their skills and their passion for making things better so it's kind of a big target right, to have yeah. a really active partner so the steps along the way include in educating them on understanding what it really means to be a partner. So sure. once they get that sense, then they maybe actually will become a partner. So I brought like five partners to the partnership <coughs> from my past, you know, and I knew what they knew how to do. So, and I knew they were good people. But I mean, it's, it's not that many people who would come in and be a partner on our end. Right. But still, actually, I, I, th I think the principles are still good to be thinking through, even though it's if it's organizations or it's it's just a handful of people that that are would be uh, natural partners to, to, to engage that way. And, yeah. And how generally, do you think 
kind of sense would people really make a good partner and are they truly interested? Right? Because after that, to be in the center ring, mm -hmm. they could join a committee or actually be on our board. So it's a real progression. Yeah. And it's similar to the progression we want to have happen with our investees. And we have some really fun success stories. Yeah. So, so um, do you have an example of just like one kind of step from one to the next, where um, the, where 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 you yeah. thought through on, on the sheet? Yeah, well, would you like to share? One of the gentlemen that lives not that far away from me, and it's really funny how many people are uh, ex Texas Centurions people. That's why oh. they retired. <laughs> and so he is one of those also. And he was so sure he was doing good things for one of the groups, and he was. That's a nonprofit in a county nearby. And so he wasn't too sure he needed to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. So I included him on a project with one of our investees. And when he found out that other partners also came in and did pieces he didn't know how to do, he found out he'd really make a much bigger uh, impact. And he, he did indeed become a partner. So that's actually a pretty unique prompt to kind of like move someone from one, one level of engagement to the next is, is even if it's not just like we're so used to thinking about simple things like email reminders or like what if you call somebody or what if you just ask. But in this case, it's maybe a passive seeming thing, just inviting someone along to, to, to see um, the impact or, or to see how something, how a program works. That on its own may be, may be the, the sort of prompt that moves someone, moves someone from one, one stage to the next, yeah. Anyone else have something to share? Um, you actually haven't had a chance to speak. Um, right, yeah, right here. So um, we also have a mentoring program. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, uh, my one, step one to two was getting them from being a mentor to being uh, willing to participate in discussions about what makes good mentoring. Mm -hmm. And then for this one, it was from doing that to um, developing training for our new mentors. Oh, so right. for someone who's been doing it for a few years. And I think that the, the motivation um, First off, is, is finding the people who's that that's going to be that's going to fit along with their career goals. So it's giving them the, the PD, you know, that's something that they need for their own professional development. But then also just um, regular acknowledgement of their expertise mm -hmm. and giving them feedback on how they're doing. So if they start to feel like they have something to share with others, and then asking them to do that in a more formal way, I think that moves them up the scale. Absolutely, yeah. Um, are there people that are there of of the of the um, the mentors like are there ones that are more um, more likely to be uh, good trainers than others? Are there, are there way, like subsets that might be more, more promising? Yeah, definitely. And um, you know, we identify some of the best as well. So you know, we have like a, a kind of scaling system, but also um, we've had mentors that have been working with us for ten years. So you know, as they move from year to year, you know, they have more and more expertise to add as well. Cool. Anyone else? Yeah, I guess a handful of hands. Go ahead. Um, so I did, I'm on the two inner circles, um, taking someone who, from a company that sponsored our wine tasting event, our big fundraiser, and moving them to becoming a board member. Um, so what would motivate someone to do that action is that they, they may not have never even heard of us, or, you know, their company, so the companies get a bunch of tickets, they give them to people, they show up, they may have never heard of us, but um, we have a lot of our core members volunteer, you know, we have a short presentation, because we want people you know, drinking and spending money, but um, getting, you know, just hearing an inspiring story and becoming really inspired by our core members. Um, obstacles they might have this time and other commitments. Um, a subset of that group that might uh, be more likely to take that goal is, is someone who has a personal connection who uh, a lot of times who can see themselves or, or their child or someone they know in the young people that we serve mm -hmm. who is someone who has been on a similar path and maybe you know could have used this help or has found you know some, some support elsewhere and then um, I think a prompt that would make that action more likely to happen would be um, direct personal contact from one of our current board members to really say you know Talk to them about what that commitment looks like, and you know what's asked of them, and why this person who is currently in that role is doing it. So. Cool, fantastic. So um, the next step after like kind of and breaking these down, looking at what 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 would make something um, mo uh, be motivating, what would be a, 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 a 
a, a certain subset to be targeting. Do if you, um, there's handouts in the, in the back left on the um, table there. Is to then um, take those notes that you just wrote and operationalize them. To think about what concrete things describe the kind of sense that you get about certain subsets being more likely than others. Like how would you be able to, to know that? Or is, there, is there data you currently collect or you could collect that, um, that would uh, describe that? So is it something that you could then search for? Or is it something, um, if there's a, uh, an obstacle that, you, that, that has like a certain threshold, if it's like, okay, most people have the time to do this, but if they have um, this kind of a job, then we probably, shouldn't wait, um, we should, probably shouldn't worry too bad about targeting them. Or on the flip side, if someone's got a certain amount of interest in something um, such that they've come to this one event or they've taken this one action, that, that makes them that much more likely to do this other thing. Um, and so if you can just take your notes down, down at the bottom on each of those analyzed steps pages, um, you'll see this is uh, measures. If you just write down some measures that, that, that you might be able to, um, to use to, to, um, to, or, to, or to look for, that would describe good, good, um, good prospects to, for, for um, moving from one step to the next. Okay, so I found myself thinking through like a lot of other actions that then would be measures. Is mm -hmm. that It can be a frame to think of it in. It just doesn't, it's not the only frame to think of it in, I guess. Like, um, there's lots of different attributes. Maybe it's age, maybe it's a past action that someone's taken, maybe it's um, where, like, how they came to your organization. It may be um, what certain issue, like, so if you have a, a range of issues that you have the online petitions you're describing, maybe if, they're, if they tend to click on these, one, these petitions, then they might be more likely to do certain things than if they were interested in these other ones. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, um, although many things are past actions, are, that's not the only way you can, you can, um, you can measure. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have, a, have, a, have a, um, some, some notes on, on, um, on the measures that they would use to identify folks? Just a sure. silly little thing that um, I thought of, because we would be doing the training that I was talking about uh, in a digital format. <coughs> Um, one of the things that would distinguish the people we would want as, as our trainers would be people who would be willing to video conference. And we do ask that in a completely different context, mm -hmm. whether they are interested in Skyping at a lower level. So that would, again, be just a sort of old, you know, way of pulling the people that we that would be most likely to do something like that. Right, no, exactly. Because otherwise you'd be like, why is like this, this so many people not interested at all? And maybe it's just they're just shy about, about being in front of people or, or being on, on online training. So. Um, having that data is, is, is a fantastic thing to be able to, to, to filter on. And not that you wouldn't ever ask someone, but you may not spend all your effort targeting those folks that, that, um, that, yeah, that haven't said that. Yeah, exactly. Any others? Sure. Yes, yeah, so my, excuse me, my actions were taking someone that we got a lot of peer, -peer fundraising. Mm. Sponsored somebody to do a particular event to actually get them to do the event themselves. Oh, yeah. Um, so the measures were perhaps they sponsored multiple people, perhaps their previous events attendees. Um, we have the option on our site to save certain events. So if they've saved particular event pages, we'll obviously target them for them. Mm -hmm. uh, if they've opened relevant mailings that we've sent out to them, we can track click throughs and things like this. Uh, people we'd avoid would be the young and the old. Basically, sure. too young or too old for the event. Uh, we're a blood cancer charity, so people that are going through treatment or anything like this, we can sort of track who and what they are. Um, and if they're already signed up for a recent event, sort of avoid people that are doing things within that time. Right, exactly, yeah. And so actually, that's a, that's a good uh, uh, um, segue, both, both of these uh, past things that you've asked questions within your system, to um, think about how you would use Civic CRM for these things. because. Um, if, you, if, um, if you're using Civic Mail, then all of your opens and clicks and so forth are right in there. And you can search on those in tandem with other, uh, other attributes, whether, they, whether they're um, said that it's okay to Skype, whether, it's, uh, whether they've clicked on certain petitions or not. Um, and so having, that, um, having that, uh, uh, those, um, those different things right there all together in the, sa in the same system means that you can run searches, you can create groups, you can 
look at, at, at uh, people who fall in both groups or in neither group or, or, um, or some combination thereof. So um, think about um, the next, the, the next uh, section underneath it that says techniques. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit about techniques uh, within Civis CRM to, to do these things. Um, and if you don't know, uh, maybe start with thinking if you, if you know how to, to um, use Civis CRM for, for um, some of the measures and then we'll try to talk a little bit about um, questions that you'll have about things that might be, um, might be a little bit more challenging to, uh, to think of uh, how, how to go about them. Does anyone have a, a good one to start with? Sure. Well, I was just thinking on that, the corporate and board member side of, of tracking, because what it said is looking at different industry um, segments where we might want to, you know, find sort of how we find sponsors, but also find board members, but tracking, um, just tagging the organizations in city as to where they fit. Mm -hmm. And so finding people who work at a certain type of organization yeah, or one in a certain industry. We have 10 construction companies, we're good, but we have you know, one energy company, we want more. Oh, yeah. Quicker, quicker, like that. Okay. I'm not sure if this works, because I've never tried it, but um, <clears throat> I would send an email with information uh, about awareness, hey, this is what's happening, uh, and then use a survey component to say, what would you do? You know, what actions would you take? Yeah. Or how would you get involved? In to answer as a response. That's actually an old, old direct mail technique. You send out the survey, it says like, I, I get these, every, we used to get them more often than now. It was like, Democratic Party survey, blah, blah, blah. It would ask a question and of course it'd say yes, and of course it'd say yes, and then it says, well, won't you donate $100 or whatever. And so so that, uh, that's sort of a survey, even if it's not used as a scientific survey, just as a way to gauge interest and a way to, to engage people, if, especially if you don't have any sort of external prompts to be able to rely upon, you can keep, keep that level of interest going through, through drier spells in the, in the time of year or, or, or to then queue up for a second ask. So, fantastic. They don't have a, um, a things that they kind of wanted to figure out how to use Civi to measure, but weren't quite sure how to go about it? Yeah, yeah I know uh, we just learned that this is something that you can do. You can do targeted Facebook promotional posts based on your contacts' email addresses, um, which is great because you might have dead email addresses in your database that you can't send emails to, but they might still be listed on someone's Facebook account. So mm. you can get that information in front of them in that way. Um, or if they do get the email, they get it in an email form and Facebook form. But trying to figure out a good way uh, to track that back into Civi. I mean, it could obviously create an activity of targeted with a Facebook post. Um, would probably be the easiest way. But that was one that I was thinking about, how to do that in a simple way that involved too much importing and exporting. Do you have to have Civi mail to do that? The targeted Facebook post? No, there are some, you use third party sites. I'm not sure how to do it. We haven't done it yet. We have a communications contractor we've been working with us who oh. mentioned it. And I was like, that's so cool. <coughs> that's awesome. Did anyone know more about this? Um, Joe? There was uh, several years ago um, an integration with City CRM where they would look up people's um, phone numbers from Facebook. Um, and it was done by. Um, some people who aren't as active now, uh, who they were working with the Republican uh, National. Oh, what's it convention. called? Yeah, um, the people from Virginia. I can't remember. Yeah. And um, that, uh, ex that extension is a bit out of date, but it's still around on a uh, public server, like GitHub or something. Um, and so if you can uh, link to their uh, Facebook, then you can pull in yeah. information because people don't actually call up the dozens of organizations to update them, but they do update their Facebook page. <laughs> and so... Uh, right, that's, that's, that would be awesome. I run into Chang every once in a while. He, he may know uh, what, what's going on, because he's, 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 he works for, uh, I forgot what Drupal shop, but a Drupal shop in DC now, so, yeah. yeah. And, uh, Mike Brinn, Brinn, I can't remember. Mm, okay, I remember, okay. Um, in the next session, I'm talking about a social uh, actually. No, 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 go, go bits. Um, Please. We just made an integration with uh, uh, a service called Attentively, which will take the emails in City CRM and look up all the um, social media accounts from about 100 <coughs> uh, social media sites and pull in recent posts and stuff. It's a paid service, um, and you need to have like 25,000 contacts to start making it worthwhile. It's about, uh, for a charity, uh, about 0.6 cents a month per 
uh, matched contact. Um, and they have a lot of things you can do. Uh, no, I, 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 when, when we were talking with folks at, uh, at the Tenley folks came by the NTC, the Civic CRM booth at the NTC, and they said that, you were, they, that they had had y'all build that, and they were like, um, uh, Paul and I were there, and, and, and neither of us heard about it, and we're like, this is awesome, this is the way, this is like the way things need to happen. So it's a, it's a cool plugin that I think solves, a, uh, again, not every, not every uh, um, targeting solution, but it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a useful tool for bringing information across from different, different areas of people's lives, and especially one where, again, everyone's really good at, at, at keeping their Facebook updated, even if they don't think to go update your charity's um, uh, 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 records. So what, what, what other um, like ideas that, that kind of you haven't been able to kind of use in, in the techniques yet? This is sort of related to that, but maybe going the other way. So like, I'm wondering, I have no idea if there's anything out there to do something like this, but like, you know, we may have a lot of people who are really actively engaging with us on Facebook or Twitter, but aren't in our database because they haven't, you know, signed up for anything really. So, like, is there any way to be able to identify who those most engaged people are on your social media and then get them in? <laughs> or just, yeah, import all of your followers. That was, that was my exact question. Yeah, um, so this attentively tool will uh, pull in all the Twitter followers and uh, you don't get their emails um, but you can create contacts and you can uh, track them. And the other thing is um, you don't always have to have them on every channel so like if you're engaging with them on social media you don't have to like it's nice but you don't have to get them in and know what they're doing uh, on other channels um, and you can drive them to a page through your posts <coughs> So, you know, actively manage to drive them so that you can figure out who's who. Facebook is, is making that harder and harder. Yeah, harder organic, every single update. Yeah, organic uh, page views. Like these guys? So, oh. But one, one technique that, that you can do if it's uh, on smaller, um, just on, on a smaller scale, if you, especially if you're not trying to move all of your folks, uh, um, but, but you, you uh, still want to be able to see the people who are keying, like you, you're engaged in a key way over on Twitter or over on Facebook, is just to manually have whoever's managing your, um, your account, if you have like a, 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 a bunch of replies back and forth, maybe just one retweet's not going to be enough to cut it, but if you're actually engaging in, in, in a meaningful way with someone, right, um, then, you, then you create an activity, you create a, a contact, because you'll probably then know the person's name, and depending on whether they use their real name or not, and again, all you, all you may have is name and Twitter account, but that's a start. And then if you get a donation from somebody who's in the same name, you, could kind of, uh, you can kind of just double check manually, but at least that has that record. And so if you're, you're using direct messages or replies, then that, that can be a useful tool, even though it's a little bit too labor intensive to do on a large scale. So cool. And so once you've, once you've operationalized what it is you like to measure, what, once you then are able to identify within CIVICRM what data is important, what, um, what maybe th additional things you need to um, co start collecting. Um, you can make it into a routine, um, whether it's an actual like totally automated routine or whether it's something that you just have a checklist that you kind of go through or something that you kind of do the first week of every month um, in terms of reviewing people who've done certain things and then deciding to do some follow-up actions. Um, Think through, think through at the end, at, um, at the end once you kind of identified your um, the, the different tools within Civic CRM is how how you can make that a routine. Whether it's training your staff to um, so everybody knows how to how to um, to do these certain searches, do these um, to uh, to identify certain data, to make sure that certain fields are filled when when um, when you have a conversation with somebody, to um, set up the reports at, um, with, the, with the correct fields and maybe even automate them being sent, sent to you every month or something like that with um, using a scheduled job. Or uh, tracking progress over time, Mark, um, plotting it on a, on, a, on a spreadsheet, making a little chart you can present, to, um, present at a, at a year-end um, meeting um, to be able to show how you're, how you're engaging people in, in, in the same way, maybe um, where things are falling short. And then, as I mentioned, like what additional data is is important to be collecting, um, uh, making sure that you start um, putting in place the, the tools to be able to collect that collect that data, whether it's just an extra field on the donation form, or whether it's having a volunteer at all your events, just having informal conversations, and then um, coming back with that sort of subjective data. 
there's there's uh, more information out there that might affect your uh, affect how your model is and affect how you you think things are working. And again, when it falls short, where you think you should be um, growing more supporters and you're not, where you um, get surprised by, by by different things, then you can refine your model. You can think of what what additional trends um, do you notice among people's participation, among um, people's backgrounds, and when they do participate. So anyway, I want to wrap things up just because it's getting towards the end of the. Um, end of the period, but uh, this is my information. Don't, don't hesitate to um, drop me a note. Um, thanks for coming, uh, um, and thanks for your patience with these worksheets. Hopefully they're helpful.